Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another money finance video for you guys. I do these every so often along with my monthly budget with me. So those come every month, but every now and then I like to sit down and do a little money finance related video because I think this topic is so fun to chat about. I love sharing my experience with budgeting and saving money and little tips here and there with you guys in case that it helps you guys out too. I think my last finance video I did was like the 10 things I stopped buying, something like that. And I feel like that was a really fun video to do and to think about and to share. So if you're interested in any of my other finance related videos, I'll leave them down below. Also, I brought my old podcasting mic out because the my sit down videos, I try to make very podcast style where it's me sharing a little editing, but not a ton of editing. You know, we have some text on the screen to like help get the video by, but really it's more of just like a conversation with you guys. And if I had a podcast, this would probably be a podcast topic that I do, but I no longer have one, but I do have the mic. So we're going to bring it out just to kind of give that vibe. Let me know what you guys think about it. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing how I manage my money as a 24 year old I'm turning 25 this year i really got into like money mindset finances and everything probably towards like the end of college um i'll go through kind of how i started budgeting how i budget now and then even going into like little challenges that i would give myself and still do that are great if you're trying to save money or to spend less and then also even getting into things like how I chose what credit cards to get, how I invest a little bit where I can, um, things like that. I also did a video in January of like my money goals for the year. And we made a vision board for my year, just for literally just finances, like paying off debt, building my savings, things like that. And so if you want to kind of see my goals for the beginning of the year and how I work through those, then you can go check out that video. And I kind of want to do like a halfway through the year recap because I did a whole reset series in January, but let me know if you guys would want like a re mid year reset series now that we're ha almost halfway through 2024, which that's just crazy. Okay. So first we're going to start with the concept of budgeting and kind of how I started budgeting, why I started budgeting, how it's helped me, all of that. So I would say I started budgeting at the end of college, like maybe my senior year. I have been making money since I was 13 years old. That's literally when I started my first YouTube channel, which is crazy to think about. But I have been making money since then, um, been self-employed since then. Obviously, I wasn't making a ton of money in middle school, but I was making enough to where I was like, had an understanding of money and making it and not, I wasn't budgeting because honestly, I just was able to put the money either towards equipment for YouTube or towards things I wanted. So there really wasn't any bills or things I had to keep up with at 13. It's kind of focused on those three categories. What can I spend? What should I save? And also tithing for my church or whatever charities I wanted to give to. Then in college is when I started realizing like towards the later half of college, I was like, okay, I'm about to graduate. I'm about to start, you know, paying all my bills finding an apartment, paying rent on my own. Like I need to figure out how much I'm spending a month and kind of figure out where I can cut back as well. So towards the end of senior year, I remember the moment of making a budget for my post-grad self. And I just did it on like a spreadsheet, like something super simple. I was just like, this is how much I need to make every month to cover rent, to cover gas, to cover food. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, like life is expensive. Adulting is expensive. Um, and thankfully I did have a savings that I could go off of for a while as well. Um, but I used an app like towards high school and college. I used Empower, which I talked about on my channel. I would find like other budgeting apps. I liked those, but I didn't always stick with them. Um, but what I did start sticking with my first year post-grad was actually the planner I created, the Dream Achieve Workbook. It's the first one we did in the student and the post-grad version of the workbook. There's a simple budget tracker page every month. And it is seriously so simple. Like on the page, it's just like income minus rent, food, shopping, bills, gas, like it just has minus your expenses. And then you write down at the bottom what your total is at the end of the month. So it's a very simple budget tracker. And I would say when you're getting started with budgeting, start simple and start with something you know you'll use. If you feel like you would love an app, try it out. Download Empower, download another budgeting type app and kind of see if you keep up with it. Um, or a lot of banks now, their mobile banking apps have like budgeting aspects to it. You can play around with that. Or just have a sheet of paper every month, buy the planner every month. It has like your one sheet budget. Or you can do what I do now, which I started um, using an 
a Google spreadsheet in the fall, I want to say. It's way more detailed, like having an Excel or Google spreadsheet. Um, I got mine off of Etsy. I'll link it below. It's what I have shown in all my monthly budget with me videos. But if you're someone who's never budgeted in your life before, I don't recommend starting with like an Excel spreadsheet. It may be too overwhelming. So just start simple with what you know you're going to use and just start with the basics. Like what I loved about budgeting now is one, I feel like I have to do it because I'm on a much stricter spending schedule than I was in college when I had way less bills and things to pay for. Um, so now, especially being self-employed, I need to know like, okay, how much am I spending every month? How much did I bring in this month? Because it changes. My Not only does my spending change every month, but my income changes every month. And so it really helps me as someone who's self-employed to like just be constantly monitoring that. I will say when it comes to like each month, I check my credit card statement a couple times throughout the month. I don't check my budget like every day. I don't check my budget even every week. I kind of just know what I set as the budget in the beginning of the month and then like maybe one or two times throughout the month, I'll look at my credit card, look at my transactions and be like, okay, am I doing good? Do I need to cut back? Can I go out for this extra meal? Can I order takeout tonight? Like, how's my budget looking? And then kind of evaluate the second half of the month off of that mid-month check-in. Even though I feel like I know how much money I have, I check my bank account at least once a week. I check my credit card often. I feel like I'm not waking up and the first thing I'm doing in the morning is like checking my credit card statements or my bank account. I feel like that can kind of be a toxic mindset to get into. Um, it's good to check and I know it can be scary if you're like scared to open up your bank account and you're scared to see how much money you have in there. I think we've all been there. But it's really helpful to just be aware of what's going on because then you can be proactive moving forward. Okay, so I wanted to share about these little challenges that I would do with myself. I would do these in college and I also do them now. And I feel like they're a great way where if you're like, I don't want to budget every expense. I don't, that stresses me out. That's not good for my mental health. Actually, I understand that aspect as well. Um, but if you want to start saving a little bit of money, I love doing these challenges because to me, even with budgeting for me, like it's a fun game. It's maybe, okay, maybe not always the most fun, but I try to tell myself it's fun, but it's at least a game where I'm like, okay, um, it's a challenge to myself to only spend this much this month on shopping or whatever it may be. And so adding in these little games or challenges into my weeks um, are very helpful for like giving you a sense of what you're spending without being so particular about budgeting. So like in college, I would do no spend days quite often where I'd be like, okay, maybe I went out a lot this weekend. And so for Monday through Wednesday, I'm going to do no spend days where basically you only buy the necessities. So if I had to get groceries, I would get that. If I had to get gas, I would get that. But no like eating out, no coffees out, no online shopping, um, no little frivolous purchases throughout the day. You're really just trying to not spend anything those days. And so if you find you had a good no spend day, maybe you're like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. I do want to film. I meant to film this like a few months ago and I need to do it actually myself. So beginning of June, I'm going to do a no spend week um, and I'm going to film it for you guys. I think that'll be a fun video. But yeah, do these little challenges with yourself. Some people do no spend months or years. That is not for me right now, but I love doing a no spend day and I'm going to try to do a no spend week. Other um, kind of rule I gave myself in college was I only eat out with friends and I still use that two years later to this day. So I will very rarely order takeout or go out by myself. Um, that's just something for me. Like if I'm going to spend the money on getting food out, I want it to be a social activity. I want it to be fun. I want it to be an event. Um, and I just feel like living in Nashville, there's already a lot of opportunities to go out and do fun stuff with friends. So I want to save my money for those opportunities. And so I only, I maybe order myself food to go like two or three times a year. I'm not even kidding, guys. It's very rare just because I'm like, you have groceries, make something at home. Or if I really want to go out, I'll invite someone. I'll be like, let's go grab kava or let's go do this. So Love that. Another little challenge is you can tell yourself, okay, I'm only going to get this certain amount of coffees out per week. Maybe that's something for you you're trying to cut back on this year. You don't have to, but if it is a goal for yourself, if you want to not get coffee out every day, or maybe you're doing it like four times a week, maybe cut it down to three and then two and then one. I'm kind of at the place where I try to just get coffee out one to two times a week. Um, and I feel like that works really well for me and my budget. Um, also using purchases as rewards for other aspects of your life. So if you you are trying to get to the gym more, tell yourself, okay, if I go to the gym three days a week for a month, then I can purchase this X amount of things that you want to purchase. Maybe you want like a new swimsuit for summer. Be like, okay, if I get a good grade on my next test, I can purchase this swimsuit. 
it's kind of like a reward system for yourself and I feel like it just makes those purchases a little bit sweeter rather than just like seeing something buying it because you want it in the moment impulse purchasing is it happens to all of us happens all the time but it's such a good thing to cut back on and you'll really see it affect your finances if you can stop the impulse spending and really just be very cautious and thoughtful about every purchase that you make and i think using purchases as a reward system for yourself is a great way to really appreciate what you're buying and making sure you like really want it another little rule or like challenge that i give myself is when i get gift cards for christmas or birthdays i try not to spend them all at once like right away so like for christmas this year i got a good amount of sephora gift cards i asked for that because i know throughout the year i get these little impulses to go to sephora and to get some new makeup and we all know makeup especially at sephora it can be so expensive and so i'm saving these gift cards for when i get one of those little impulse purchases i think i already used one in like january and i still have one i think i still have like 50 dollars um that i'm gonna probably use this summer when i like feel like a little spending urge coming on and then it's like free money because you're using a gift card that you got as a gift when you get that craving to spend money have a gift card saved away maybe it's a target maybe it's sephora maybe it's just a visa card that you asked for and have that just as an emergency for when you're like trying to be good and maybe it's not in the budget to spend money on extra things that month but you just want it we understand use the gift cards for that this video is already getting kind of long so i'm going to breeze through my little credit card situation because i'm not an expert at all i'm just sharing my journey with credit cards because um, I think it's something that I'm actually surprised that still a lot of young people don't realize how the credit system works, don't understand how like credit cards actually help you build credit. You just have to make sure that you're paying them off fully. I'm going to, since I'm not an expert, I'm going to send you guys to the podcast I listened to that is from an expert. It's from The Points Guy, and I think it's on The Skinny Confidential. I listened to this about two years ago, like right when I graduated, and it, I was like, oh my gosh how did I not know this? Like I need to be getting points for all these business and personal purchases that I've been making. I did have a credit card, like a college credit card before then um, that I would use as a business card. But now I have an Amex business card um, for Dream Daily. And, and then I have a Chase Sapphire Preferred card for my personal. So pretty much everything I buy is going on one of those two cards. If it's a personal purchase or a business purchase, it's going on a credit card. Like I said, to really get the most out of points and the point system from like airline cards and stuff like that, travel cards, you do have to be paying them off fully because we do not want any interest or any credit card debt. So um, I'm going to tell, I'm going to send you guys though to that podcast episode. Hopefully it's still up and I can find it because it's what told me, it's how I found out which credit cards were going to work best for me. Um, so I will have that information in the description box for you guys. But credit card points has been like my favorite thing since learning about that for the past two years. I have paid for so many flights. Um, I mainly use them for flights or like bigger purchases or for paying off the card. If I'm like, you know, my budget's looking a little low that month, maybe I didn't have as much income as I was expecting. I'll use the points to actually pay off the credit card. So it's seriously such an amazing system once you get into it. And then of course, with that, I'm also building my credit score. And I found that now I have three ways of building my credit score, my credit cards. Um, two years ago, right when I graduated, I got a car loan. I needed a new car. So I got a car and I'm paying, you know, I have a credit account set up for that. So my car loan and then also my student loans that I'm still paying off some, um, those three factors are adding to my credit score and I do pay those every month. So it really is helping build my credit score. So for when I'm ready to buy a house, you know, farther down the line, I have no idea when that's going to be, but when it does come, I can hopefully get a good mortgage rate and everything. And credit is not a bad thing. You need good credit to live, but getting there and learning how are the best ways for me to build that score, um, can take some time to learn and understand, but I promise it's not as complicated as you think. Once you figure out the system, you're good. Okay. The last thing I'm going to, again, talk about briefly is, um, investments because this is something that I do have my toes like in the water of investing, but I'm again, not an expert. One thing my aunt had me set up as soon as I turned 18, which I'm very thankful for. Thanks, Sherry, is my Roth IRA. This is through Vanguard. So you can just go to the website, create an account. And if you have enough, I think it's like, don't quote me on this. I want to say it's like 2000, a couple thousand dollars you have to use to start the account, but then you can add to it however much you want a month or a year. I pulled up the Google definition of this because 
it's just gonna be so much better than me trying to explain it. So a Roth IRA is an individual retirement account IRA that allows you to contribute after tax dollars, which can grow tax free. You can withdraw your contributions and earnings tax free and penalty free after you're 59 and a half years old, so 60 years old. Um, and the account has been open for at least five years. So this is especially helpful for me because again, I'm self employed. So I feel like I just have to think about money in sometimes a different way. I don't have like a 401k that like my employer matches or anything like that. So I am building my retirement fund through this, but also anyone can have a Roth IRA. You don't have to be self-employed. And so I'm adding money to this now so that it's growing um, in the market. And when I'm 60 years old, I can have this fund that I can take out and it'd be tax-free. So we love that. That is the one I contribute, I think like $200 to every month. As I make more money, I want to be able to contribute to the max every month and every year, but for now that's what I do. And then the other thing that I started in college is I would dabble in like Robinhood, which is more for individual stocks. It's not something I use now, but if you're wanting to get into buying and trading individual stocks, I know a lot of people like the app Robinhood, but you can look into that for yourself. Um, I did set up an S&P 500 index fund with a uh, with Northwestern Mutual in college. So Again, I'm reading the definition of this. An S&P 500 index fund is a passive investment that aims to match the performance of the S&P 500, which is a stock market index that includes the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the US. So this is a good choice for investors who want to earn returns that align with the broader market without owning individual stocks. So this has stocks that are the top 500 publicly traded companies in the US. So things like Disney, Coca-Cola, um, you know, those big companies that are usually doing good. So this does usually have a positive increase over time. But as we all know, any stock can be um, a little risky, but having being a part of like an S&P 500 is a little less risky than like buying and trading and selling individual stocks because it's just kind of like, here's the group. I don't even look at this. I don't I'm not I'm not putting money in this right now, um, but I think I was putting like one hundred and fifty dollars into this a month up until this year because I decided I wanted to build up my savings and then I'll continue to add. But I still have the money in that account. It's, I don't think it's very much. And it just goes with the stock market. So when the stock market's up, it's up. When the stock market goes down, I lose some dollars. But that's just the game of having an index fund um, and being a part of the stock market. This is something that I'm not going to touch till again, like 10, 15 years down the line. Um, if you're a young person watching this, then just put a little bit of money into a Roth IRA, into an index fund somewhere in the stock market. Because as they say, as we learn in our finance classes, like time is the best thing you can do for investments. So the longer that they're in there, the more money you're going to make. And it's compounding interest. I know it's hard because like you want the wealth now, but I promise put some money, let it have compound interest over the years, and you'll be very happy in 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now um, that you put money in in your 20s. So so that is how I manage my money as a 24-year-old in my 20s. I'm sure I still have much to learn about finances and money, but these are kind of the basics that I started with at the end of college and have kind of grown upon since being post-grad the past two years. I know I need to stop calling myself that because it's been about two years now, but my post-grad journey has been I've had a lot of focus on money because I've realized, okay, I need to like be very specific about my budgeting and how I manage it and making good financial decisions. And so it's just been something that's been on my mind a lot the past two years. And I kind of wanted to share where I'm at now, how I manage it. Um, if you have any tips for me, if you have any ideas or yeah, tips, please let me know. Would love to hear them and let me know what other videos you guys want to see, whether they're finance related or just summer content, lifestyle related. Let me know what you're wanting and thank you guys so much for watching. All right. I think that's it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.